this video is going to go over how we can handle error conditions in our script. So first off, I'm going to talk about what kind of errors we might get. Um, and I'm going to use that demonstrating my new user uh, script. So here is my new user script. I get a list of users. I get some more data, basically the password. And then I add a user. Here's the command where I add a user. So I don't have any error checking in the script. So if for some reason it fails to add this user, my script is just going to keep going and keep trying to execute these commands uh, that are all going to, that are many of them are going to fail um, when I try to do that. Um, and I don't really care about that because I know that my input is good and I don't know that my command is good. And I know that most of the time the script is going to run without problems. The one thing I did uh, make it do is it actually checks to see if the user exists before I add it. So here, here's a command where I say grep for $i from Etsy password. So essentially this is trying to see if the user already exists. If the user does not exist, then I'm going to add the user. And then uh, down here I echo the user already exists. So, so basically I put in some extra code to try to avoid an error condition because if I tried to add the user when it already existed, I'd get an error saying user already exists then I would reset the user's password, and I would try, try to create these directories again, which is gonna already exist. So, so some of these commands would run and not cause a problem. Like if I, try, if I try to make the directory and it already exists, it's gonna give me an error, but it's not gonna break anything. You know, Changing the owner and changing the permissions is gonna be fine, but if the user already exists and has already logged in, if I change their password back to, this, to, the, to what I set the default password to, that's a bad idea. Um, I don't worry about that because I only run the script at the beginning of the semester when I add users, so, so uh, that's not going to happen. I, I also don't run this code if the user already exists. So this is an example of how I put some code in to avoid doing things that might cause me an error. Like I said, there are a ton of other things that could happen with this command. You know, For example, if I tell it to set a, a home directory in a place that doesn't exist, it's going gonna, it's gonna to generate an error. But like I said, I know that's not going to happen because this is my script. But what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about how we can handle errors while we are writing scripts. So I have this little uh, little script I wrote. Basically, it uses the date command to get uh, the word today. to set a variable called the today. I'm echoing out today so we can make sure what's in there. And then we're creating a directory called files and then followed by the date. So the date command, we didn't talk about this, but you can, you can add a format specifier that tells you what format you want the date to get in to be in. So if we go if we if we get back out of here, if you just type date, you get this format. If you want some other format, you can do date plus percent m percent d percent year. And that gives you the the date in a different format and you can change it up to get just a two letter year, a four letter year. You can do all kinds of things to see that and you can look in the man page for date to see all the different format things here are all the different format things you can do but this podcast isn't about date but that's something you can do so essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this directory because I still had it for testing so basically what this script does basically what the script does is it gets today's date and then it tries to create a directory called files and then you know afterwards we would do some processing using the, the new directory. So we don't have any actual processing down there at this point. But essentially I would want a, a, a directory called files. Here let me go put uh, an echo. Echo. This is where the magic would be happening. So if I run that script it says, oh, hey, you know, it printed out the, the directory, the, the date, because it's pretty buggy, and it prints where the magic will be happening. If I look, I have that directory. But now if I run that, direct, that command again, I get an error. It says, oh, hey, cannot create the directory. It's already there. So in this case, this error doesn't prevent the script from running. This error wouldn't do, no, do anything other than annoy me because it's, it's, it's printing out. But it could, it could be, it could... Uh, some errors do cause problems. So there's a couple things we can do uh, to avoid this with directories specifically. I have another script called errors2.sh and it, it ran. And if you see, it tells me that the directory already exists. So in errors2, I have some code that basically says, oh hey, 
I, I, I got all extravagant on us. I wanted to use a variable for deer because I didn't want to type it over and over again. And I forgot to change my variable in one place. So essentially I'm setting deer variable equals to files followed by the dollar date. And then I'm saying, then I'm saying if not a directory dollar deer, then make deer. And it says else echo dollar deer already exists. So in this case, if I run the script, it says it already exists. If I get rid of the directory and run it, it didn't say anything. But now if I look, I have the directory again. So it created the, the directory for us because it didn't exist. But now if I run it again, it's going to say the directory already exists. So that's, that's one way you can try to avoid getting some errors. Uh, there might be other problems that you might have. So uh, sometimes if you, if you get an error that you can't continue from, you need to stop. So we'll, we will um, change our directory to some place I don't have permission to write. So I don't have permission to write to slash home as my regular user. And what do, you, what do I mean by that? If I look at the permissions on slash home, right? No, I wanted the directory. Ls dash ld. If I look at the permissions on slash home, root has write on the directory. Nobody else has write on the directory. So nobody else can create files or directories in slash home. So I cannot create a file in slash, a directory in slash home. So if I try that, I get an error, permission denied. So if you're writing a script that needs the directory to exist and, the, and you cannot create the directory, you need that script to exit at that point. So if we, did I edit the script? Lose my mind. So yeah, so in this case, it's gonna to try to create that directory in, in slash home. If I run it, if I run it now, I get a permission denied error and the directory does not exist. See if I I should be able to hit the tab to finish that with the tab complete. The directory the directory does not exist because I didn't create it. So in that case, I want the script to exit. Uh, but how can I detect that? Well, every command uh, that we use has a return value, and uh, we can use that return value to determine if the command completed successfully or did not complete successfully. So in this case, if I type um, the make deer command again, right? There's a special shell variable that has the return code of the last command you executed, which is dollar question mark. So if I had typed that, I got a return value of one. Return value of zero equals success. Return value of anything other than zero equals failure. And each different, different, different command has different return values uh, for what the error was. So in some cases, they, they ha they'll give you uh, a, one, a one equals this failure, a two equals that failure, a three equals that failure. So you can further, further use the return code to determine what the issue was. But in this case, we're just going to go edit our code to look for that error. So if we're making the directory, then we want to put some code in if dollar question not equal zero, then them, venom, phi. Always, if, I don't know if you noticed, I always go put my phi after I put an if so I don't forget to put it. It's really helpful if you have uh, multiple levels of nested code and it's not uh, obvious to you. And I'm going to type echo failed to create um, dollar deer. And then if, if it's a permanent error that you need to quit from, then you want to exit. So now if I if I run this, this command, if, the, if it fails to create the directory, it's going to give me a return value of uh, some number that's not zero, and then uh, fail. So errors, errors, two. So now you see, I tried to create it, it failed, and then I get printed out my error message that said failed to create slash home slash file slash whatever, and then it exited instead of continuing to run my script. Uh, actually, I didn't have any code down here, so let me put some more code down here. Magic happens here.
If I'm doing this to demonstrate that it actually exited the script instead of continuing. So there, it, it exited the script instead of continuing. So, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and run the script again without, without, uh, run the script again and have it actually create the directory in the right place. So there, it's, it tells me it already exists and the magic happens here. If we remove the directory and run it again, it didn't tell us anything because it actually created the directory. And if we run it again, it says, oh, the directory already exists. So that is a quick overview of how you can handle errors, including sometimes you don't even care that the error exists because the code is going to work fine anyway. Uh, and sometimes it might not. One other thing I'll tell you, if you look at the man page for a particular command, it usually will tell you what return codes you can expect down towards the bottom. So if we go down to the bottom of the user add command, I knew this had useful useful error messages. Exit value of one equals success. As you value, I mean, ex exit value of return code of zero equals success. One means you can't update the password file. Two means a valid command syntax. So if you if you were so inclined, you could um, write your code to actually look for the different return values and then you could print an error message uh, specific to what the issue was. So that, that's, uh, that's how we can use uh, detect errors in our code and use return values uh, to, to make our code work better.